Hello, welcome to the Jew3 Project podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Fields. I'm the founder of the Jew3 Project. For all of those who don't know what the Jew3 Project is, it, it was birthed from Jude 1 and 3. The passage says, earnestly contend for the faith. And we are on a mission to do just that here at the Jew3 Project. The Jew3 Project is not your normal apologetics organization. We cater to the African-American demographic, specifically because a lot of apologetics organizations are usually ran by Caucasians. And I don't, they don't do this intentionally, but because they're ran by Caucasians, they usually um, cater to Caucasians, not on purpose, but just because we are around usually the people group that we identify with the most. And we usually are culturally inclined to just be drawn to people of our same race and same culture. So I wanted to do something that um, address apologetics in a way that was geared towards the African-American community. So it's going to be a little, so apologetics with a twist in a sense. For those who you, of you who do not know, apologetics is not an apologizing. My friends tease me about that all the time. Are you apologizing to something? No, apologetics comes from the Greek word apologia, which means which means to make a defense for, and it has come to mean a defense for the faith. So apologetics cover, covers many areas, such as who is Jesus, the reliability of the Bible, refuting cults, biblical evidences in history and archaeology, answering objections, in short, reasons to why Christianity is the true religion. And so we always are encountering questions. I think first Peter does a good job and in, in giving us the charge in first Peter 315. He says, always be able to defend the hope that you have. And so we have this hope of Christ and we know he is the true way, but sometimes we aren't able to articulate properly how to defend that truth or how to answer these questions or how to defend what we believe. So this podcast and this organization is to equip you to be able to defend the faith. Um, the first series I want to do is something a little different. Um, it's hip hop and theodicy, how hip hop addresses theodicy. I believe that hip hop is something that is synonymous with the millennial culture, with culture, with the culture of the day, especially African-American culture. Um, everybody, most young people, young adults, young people love hip hop. They love rap music. And so hip hop is not just a genre. It's a culture. It, it, it affects the way we dress. It affects how we look. And so in hip hop, we have conscious questions that go on because people are writing their life. They're writing their thoughts and they're putting it to beats and rhymes. And so we want to look at that because we believe that hip hop is asking the questions that our culture is asking. And one of the questions that our culture is asking is the question of theodicy, the problem of evil. How do we explain a God, a good, loving, all knowing God and evil being present in the world? Um, I struggle with that at times. You know, when you hear things that are are inherently evil and you're like, God, why did you allow this? This is this is I don't understand. How could you allow um, this to go on. I don't understand how you can allow children to be involved in sex trade and be raped without seeing about them. If you're loving, if you're a father, I couldn't imagine my dad and my mom knowing that I'm about to be raped and not do anything about it. I can't imagine them because I know that they love me so much. They would do anything to protect me. And so when we equate father with, with God, there's this, there's this ex expectation that you're going to be there for me, that you're going to protect me. And since you know everything and you're everywhere and you love me, how can you allow evil? And I think that that's the question that we might not inherently, we might not ask explicitly every day. We might not describe it, the problem of evil, but when something goes wrong in our lives, the problem of evil is 
is at the forefront of our mind. God, why? Why did you allow this? It's not fair. And so the things that we boast about when we are in church and we're praising God and we say, God, I love you. God, you're amazing. God, you're great. You're, you give me unmerited favor. You give me grace. And we thank you and you're so amazing. But when something bad happens, when somebody dies, when we're hurt in a way that we can't explain, or we see people that are evil, prospering in a sense, we wonder, God, are you really good? And so all the things that we praise him for being good, loving, all knowing, all those things we praise him for, when uh, evil happens in our lives, the same things we praise him for are the same things we question him about. And so I want to explore this idea in relationship to hip hop. I know people don't always make the connection on how do we tie in theodicy and hip hop. But I believe that hip hop is axing the problem of evil um, in their lyrics all the time. And, and one of the ways this is became this became apparent to me is me listening to Jay-Z um Jay-Z's song um Lost One. Now, I'm not a conspiracy theory. I'm I don't really give credence to the whole Illuminati factor. So if you are Illuminati, if you believe in the Illuminati, you might not be a fan of Jay-Z. I'm not a fan of everything he does. I'm not a fan of all of his lyrics, but I do one of my favorite Jay-Z songs is Lost One. It has Chrisette Michelle on the hook. And I just, I love her voice as a, as a side note, but, um, lost one. And in the song, he talks about the problem of evil, um, very candidly. I'm sure he wouldn't say, oh, I was trying to explore this problem, but he talks about his nephew that died and how it made him question some things. I'm going to play the clip. So in his song, lost one, he gives in his lyrics, he says, you probably weren't able to make it out through the clip, but he says, my nephew died in the car I bought. So under that belief, it's partly my fault. Close my eyes and squeeze. Try to block that thought. Place any burden on me, but please not that Lord. Time don't go back. It go forward. Can't run from the pain. Go towards it. Some things can't be explained. What caused it? And that line at the end, some things can't be explained what caused it, is the question and the problem of evil. That's the odyssey. What caused this pain or this evil in my life? It doesn't seem fair. It doesn't make sense to me. I can't conceptualize it. So what caused this, God? Was it you that caused it? Was it coincidence? Was it chance? Was it just a Satan, a evil presence in the world? And so when we look, everybody's asking this question. As we can see in Lost One, Jay-Z's asking the question, what caused this evil in my life? Um, I think first we have to, when we're asking, asking this question of pr problem of evil, asking this question, what caused it? We have to look at our own presuppositions and thoughts about what evil and good is. What is evil and what is good? The problem I have with our culture in this day is when we ask questions, we don't think about, we don't think through the implications of the questions we're asking. So one of the most hypocritical things I think and how we ask this question is we we ask it without understanding the parameters and foundations of truth. We want truth, but we want it apart from absolutes. So in our day, people will say, uh, live your own truth. Well, if my truth contradicts your truth, how do we even define truth? If everybody has a relative view of truth, then how can we even define evil? For evil to exist, an absolute truth must exist. So if I say it is wrong to slap you in the face and you say to me, it is right for me to slap you in the face. 
because that's my truth. And I feel that's what you deserve. How can we know or define truth if both of us are operating by our own view of what truth is? And if that's the case, how can we even define evil? If truth is relative, if truth is your truth, whatever you think your truth is, then evil is not it's something that we can pinpoint as a reality because we have not designated a basis for truth. In order to define good and evil, truth has to have a basis in which we ground, ground it in. For that, as Christians, that's the word of God. So as we explore this series, I don't know how far we're going to go with it or how many um, different um, parts we're going to have. But as we explore this series of theodicy and hip hop, um, we need to ask ourselves, how are we going to define truth in a relative age? If the Bible is going to be the basis in which we define truth, how are we going to interpret scripture? How are we going to formulate an, a biblical, humble hermeneutic that allows us to look at truth through the scripture. So this is just an introduction, but I want you to know that everybody's asking this question. You're not the only one. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the problem of evil. Until next time, I'm your host, Lisa Fields. This is a Jew 3 Project. Remember, you can check out our website at www.jew3project.com. Also, check us out on Twitter at Jew 3 Project, on Instagram at Jew 3 Project, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Jew 3 Project.